So welcome back friends to a beautiful day on the homestead. So I've been working, I've had a problem uh, that I've been trying to figure a solution for it. I think I have it and I've just got it completed. I want to share it with you. So there's a couple things going on here. The other thing that I want to share with you is what I think may be the most perfect cell phone holder for car, motorcycle, boat, anything uh, that you've ever come across. So this is my latest mod that I wanted to share with you and, and something, I don't know why more guys don't do it. I'd searched around and I couldn't hardly find anything on, on, on the internet, so I kind of built my own. That's why I'm sharing it with you today. So what I've gotten into as I've really enjoyed, um, uh, with this is my, uh, <clears throat> my dirt bike uh, is uh, this adventure style riding. I, so over Father's Day, Mrs. W asked me, so what do you want to do? And I said, well, I want to, on Father's Day, I said, actually, I want to go up to, to, to Mount Fuji and start mapping out these trails and uh, hopefully that we can do these epic loops when the, when the snow melts. Uh, so <laughs> that's exactly what I did. Uh, so I went up there and one of the problems that I, ha that I ran into was is I he rely heavily upon my, um, the GPS uh, mapping system on my phone. I use Gaia. If you want the best of the best, uh, mapping program. Gaia is G-I-A-I. -I. Check it out. It is it's phenomenal. I love it. So I was using that and, and I was going around and exploring all this stuff. And the problem that I was having was the constant dread that my cell phone's dying, right? That's the first thing. The other thing is, is I was keeping it in my pocket and I was stopping, you know, a hundred times, opening my pocket with the gloves on, taking it out. You know, it was really a hassle. So I thought, I got to change this. I got to do something different. So the first thing I thought, how do I address the power situation? Because, you know, that's, that's a big concern for me because I've got the screen on, I'm watching, I'm using it and I, it, and the battery's dying once it's dead you know and you're out in the middle of nowhere you got a problem yeah there's external battery deals but those are a hassle and you got to plug them in you know it's just it doesn't work very well so i started digging around and this is what i came up with i found on amazon a little waterproof usb port with the sae type connections those are just the little waterproof two pin connections and it's got a really nice decent housing with a waterproof cap so if you're in the rain or you're washing, you know, washing your stuff off, you can you can cover it up and you don't have to worry about it getting ruined. If it does get ruined, no big deal because you can just unplug it right here and plug a new one in. But this is so fantastic and I mounted it down here, you know, kind of inside the bars where it's protected. And then I'm, I'm tying this in with a ram mount. So the idea, and I tried it out yesterday that worked perfectly, even on really, really rough terrain, was to be able to have a bomber bulletproof mounting system for my for my phone to use as an as a map um, with this plug-in that will be charging off the motorcycle I'll never have to worry about the dead battery so let's go take a look at the mount and then I'll put it all together for you and show you how it works this is so exciting this stuff is so good I've used this stuff for years this is not a product endorsement I've used RAM stuff uh, before there even was a YouTube uh, but the whole the whole thing starts with this ball and socket this is the this is the, the system. And what's cool about it is that it's, well, it's USA made, it's super affordable, and you can adapt it to almost any particular application. It's even getting to the point now where there are third party companies like this company here that makes these mirrors uh, that are producing things with the, the, the compatible RAM mount ball, the size where you can use this right here. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how to do this for your car. Uh, the best cell phone mount for your car possible, and then how I did the motorcycle. So this is the this is what the holder is right here. And what what you get here is you get a kind of a spring mounted deal uh, that will come in here with these big rubber feet there and hang on this. And you so you can orient you know your your deal any way you want to. Good grief. Uh, and it's going to fit pretty much any phone. Now these come in a couple different sizes. So if you have those giant phones, that will work too. Now, one downside, like my dad pointed out, we were just talking about this, was that they, they tend to push the buttons if you don't put them in correctly. So you've got your volume buttons or, or whatever. And if you install this wrong, it, will, it pushes on there and then yet that thing comes up there. And that is, that is a little bit of a bummer. But I think it's worth a trade-off because you don't have to buy a cell phone mount for every different phone that you get. Uh, you can, this is gonna be universal. And if your wife has got an Android and you've got an iPhone or something, you can have one mount in the car and anybody with whatever they have is going to be able to put this in there. It's super, super good. Now, this is not good enough for rough abuse for a motorcycle. So the, the solution is, it's, I mean, it's not, what was that? Super high tech, uh, but very, very effective. And it's this, uh, this rubber girdle thing right there. So how it works is, is when you, if you're gonna be racing the Baja 1000, right? And using a phone to navigate, uh, you can clamp this in here, right? Let's say we'll clamp it in there like that, right below the buttons. And then these little guys just, 
my goodness, that's weird. Uh, you, these little guys will stretch over here. Oh man, you're killing me. How about airplane mode? How would you like that? Okay, that'll learn it. All right, so you stretch these guys over here like this, and now you have a really solid mount that's not gonna come off. I saw these being used when I went on that dual sport ride up in Washington. There was a bunch of guys that, that were running these on dirt bikes and adventure bikes, and all reports were positive. That was very good. Another cool thing is you can use, you can use your uh, phone, still use your phone, or it, on this phone anyway. The lens, does it, it clears, and you could, if you wanted to, to do something like that. Okay, so that takes care of the, the motorcycle side of it and the car side of it. Then the next component is gonna be these little arms. Now you can get these in all different lengths. You can get them in plastic or you can get them made out of metal. The plastic ones are cheaper and I have found them to be perfectly fine. You can even get super long ones if you wanted, but I just got the shortest one possible for the motorcycle and the medium sized one. This is for Mrs. W's Forerunner where she runs hers like this. So you can see the whole system. Then. Most of these suction cup deals that we, you know, I've tried several of them and they have been very terrible. This is the only one that I've found that hasn't fallen off when it gets hot. You know, you have your GPS or your phone up there and you come back in your car after a hot day and the GPS is laying on the ground. This one hasn't done that, it's been very good and I think it's because it's got this, this lever that sucks all of the, the air deal out of it or changes the, it pulls it in and creates a really tight vacuum. This is very, very good. So let's go over to the bike. I'll show you how I mounted this all up, how it works, because it's super awesome. Um, and then um, I'll show you the next little project we got brewing. So for mounting up to a motorcycle, bike, whatever, snowmobile, boat, you could do this pretty much on anything. You can get several different adapters. You can get ones that clamp around a bar or a handrail or tubing. I just decided to go with, I put this, so the foundation here is one problem I was having we're going down rabbit holes here, was with riding was my hands were going numb from the vibration. And I'd go on these long rides and my hands would be, be numb for like a week or a week and a half and I couldn't, uh, it was getting to the point where I was losing strength in my hands and it was really becoming a problem. Finally, I found a solution. These bars here are made by a company called Fastway in Utah. These are flex bars and they, if you look here, they've got elastometers on here that pivot. So when you hit and the, vi uh, the vibration has, it really is, reduced from these neoprene bushings or whatever they are and then those hard shocks and bumps are, are soaked up because the handlebars hinge a little bit uh, and it's just been wonderful. Then I had them fill the, the tubes part here with solid brass uh, to get some mass in there to further reduce that and that fixed my problem. So also it made a really good uh, place or a foundation uh, for the phone mount and GPS and all that because I've got these two bars here. So this is just a little plate that they sell uh, for mounting like a trip computers or uh, dedicated GPS's and so I got the universal RAM mount and just put the, the two little Phillips screws on there, drilled a couple holes and now I can mount this on here uh, very securely. And you know, it's not always going to be on here. I mean, if we're doing some hardcore riding through brush and sticks and stuff, I'm not going to put a phone up on there. I'm going to throw up my pack. Uh, but for exploring and doing your adventure riding and just, you know, cruising around and it's really nice because I don't need the trip computer anymore. I've got the elevation. I've got my speedometer. I've got all odometer. I've got all that stuff built into this wonderful app. So um, it's just easier. Now, the best part, of course, is I've got the ability with my phone cord. to charge the phone, which I've never had before via the UPS port. I mean, it's just, just awesome. You could charge all sorts of things. I mean, you can recharge my cameras. I'm always, batteries are always a problem for me and having this like this is super cool. So there we go. That uh, we're charging, we're charging off the lithium battery on the bike. The bike has an alternator and I can go all day. I can leave the screen on and don't have any problems whatsoever. It's just, Awesome. I just couldn't be happier with it. Now this ram mount here is probably the more common style. This is going to be one that you're going to go around a, a handlebar. It's just a C. It's just basically a, a U, a U shape with the bolts that you can clamp down uh, over the bars or over a handrail. And I've just got this one on my handbrake clutch perch. And this is the one that I use uh, for the mirror. I don't. I, I don't usually run a mirror um, unless I'm going to be on the road because the you know we're, this this has a plate and it's uh, street legal, uh, so I have to have a mirror. So I keep this in my pack, um, and if I need to, I can do that. I have ridden ridden with it off road, and the, what's worked out pretty good is I've just folded it down like this, 
clamped it off uh, so it doesn't get damaged and it's worked fine. Um, so if I'm if I think that I'm going to be on road, off road, you know, connecting trails and such, I'll just put this guy on and I'll just fold it down uh, right here and it hasn't been a problem whatsoever. I have had a problem running my GPS up here because it does stick up kind of high um, and it tends to grab lots of brush and stuff where it seems to be a little bit more protected there in the middle. Here is our next project. So yes, your eyes are not deceiving you. I am holding a Husqvarna chainsaw uh, and not a steel. You think I'm going to put a steel? chainsaw on a Husqvarna motorcycle? Absolutely not. We're going to keep it, keep it all Sweden all the time. Um, also, I've become a little disenchanted with uh, steel uh, for the, uh, the fuel geyser issue. Uh, I've talked about this in the past, but they have got a persistent problem that is happening. You can go online and watch it when guys, it really puts me off in the wildland firefighting ground, um, are pulling the caps off. There's, build, there's pressure building in the tank and, and the fuel just sprays out. And that's really, really bad uh, when you're running a saw on an active um, uh, fire, fire ground. It just is not acceptable and it doesn't, I'm not getting the impression that steel is taking it ownership of it as much as they should in dealing with the situation. The Husqvarna saws have never done that. Um, and so am I gonna switch over and, and completely go over to Husqvarna? Uh, I don't know, uh, but when I decided for my motorcycle or bike saw, um, this is a pro level T540 XP. This is an arborist saw, um, and it's a top handle saw. It's a little bit different than the other ones in that the throttle and safety lever and shutoff switch and everything are on the top rather than in the back. And this is a saw. Whoops! This is a saw that's designed for climbing. That's why it's got the. Uh, it's so much thought has went into this. It's just a brilliant little saw. Uh, you can tether it. So guys that are uh, toppers or climbers or arborists, are, these saws are really popular. They've they've got uh, two little rings on there, so you can have it swivel this way, or you can fold it away and have it swivel this way. And the coolest part about this is look at the shape of it. It's shaped like a little ball. And so when you're lowering it through the branches, it's not going to catch on things. It doesn't have a lot of hard edges. Um, it's, it's a great, great little saw. It's almost two and a half horsepower in this itty bitty package that weighs what? Seven or eight pounds wet. Uh, just amazing. It's got a 14 inch bar uh, and it is just a little ripper. These, it's even got little dogs on it. Right there, <laughs> they came with. So I had Jack put those on yesterday, but I'm super excited about this because I have a, we have a big adventure coming up. Uh, me and my buddies that I've been riding with are, are, are gonna, waiting for the snow to melt out to do this gigantic, huge, I can't, I can't let the cat out of the bag, but what we need to do is we need to do a bunch of clearing. There's a bunch of dead and down timber that are gonna prevent us from doing what we want to do. So we're setting up uh, these bikes to go in there and to clear this and to, and to get through there. And having a couple chainsaws is going to be really, really critical. We're gonna be a long ways from any support or any vehicles. So we just, we, we've got to have a super secure way of mounting these saws just like this on the front of the bike. So I'll be sharing more with this in the, in the future videos, but I'm working on a couple deals here where we're going to replace a number plate and put a really good lightweight uh, saw mount on the front of the bikes that's, that won't be over 10 pounds. So we can go in there and, and use these. So it's, uh, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome, but I wanted to share that with you really quick. So more on that in the future. All right. Well, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.